Welcome to the Deep Dive, Emerald City Hockey's Seattle Kraken podcast. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Deep Dive, Emerald City Hockey's Seattle Kraken podcast. Uh, it's going to be our big mid-season report card episode, RJ, so you know, get ready everybody for that. Uh, we got that exciting stuff. Going to talk briefly about you know this little streak that the team is on just because that's been going on in the background. But of course, first we got to talk about Queen Anne Beer Hall, RJ. And again, it's just one of these things like I always sit down and try to think, OK, what can I bring up about this about this place that I love so much? The pretzel. I feel like we've done that a bunch. I just keep coming back around to there's got to be some sort of slogan we could say for them that just works in there with like, you know, the place where the team goes, but better than the place where the team goes, <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like that's a little too wordy. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. We got to workshop this. I mean, again, we we know the guys who run the beer hall. We got to we got to get Juice and, and Gary and Isaac on this and, you know, see if we can workshop something. Yeah, exactly. But it's still I think it's the best way, especially on this Kraken specific podcast to talk about the beer hall as our wonderful sponsor. who have been they've been so kind to us through through these last couple seasons. But, you know, it's the place where the players go. It's the place where, you know, on the corporate side of things, people from the team go like everybody from this organization goes to this beer hall there's got to be a, a saying somewhere in there that they can use and that we can use uh if anybody wants to you know workshop that for free for us uh, you know feel free to to do that yeah also dylan fun fact do you know where we were uh, a year ago tonight oh oh it's the 14th so it would be the yeah. beer hall for that first ever for like watch chicago party game. at for the chicago game yeah it was what, five goals in the first period for the kraken <laughs> yep strong i could not believe it that we happened to pick that game uh, such a fun time it was it was a lot of fun got that that was the first time i tried a pretzel that was my first time at the beer hall actually <laughs> so that's right it was yeah. so as i got the pretzel i mean oh man there was lots of good memories there so yeah thanks for bringing that up that's true that's true yeah um all all right, so before we get to the mid-season report cards for all the players, RJ, um, ch just need to mention this, and that is the fact that the Kraken have won nine games in a row, which is a franchise uh, streak record for most wins in a row, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's just been cool. I feel like we've talked about it so much. It's been going on for so long. This is, what, the third deep dive that this has been a part of. I don't even know what to say anymore, but it felt like it needed to be brought up. Yeah, I, I think, you know, given that it's some franchise history there, and I, I was looking into stats of just long win streaks the other day, and I, I need to narrow it down. Like, I, I kept going from, like, the longest win streak ever in NHL history. I got as far as 11-game win streaks, and no team that has ever had an 11-game win streak in a season has missed the playoffs. And I don't know if that applies to 10 games or not, because there's a lot more 10-game win streaks than yeah. there are 11. But I'm going to keep working on that and see what I can find. Well, I can tell you a team on a 10-game win streak who isn't going to do it, and that's the Edmonton Oilers, RJ. Yeah! Isn't going to do it. Okay, I don't <laughs> know if I believe that. <laughs> that's fine. That's fair. I don't know if I believe it either. Um, but yeah, you know, the Kraken have just been playing so well. I mean, so many things have been going right for them, from Joey Decord and his goaltending, uh, just the, the changes that the coaching staff made that, you know, so just so happened to coincide with the streak that the team has been on RJ imagine that and um and just all of it the fact that you know it includes a winter classic it includes home games it includes this longest road trip of the season for them like it, it is something that does deserve to be talked about mentioned because what the guys are doing is really really special for this team for this young franchise and and really for the city I mean right now RJ right like the Kraken are boy the does Seattle thing. need it yeah after after some rough football news over the last week or so, um, you know, the Mariners missing out on the playoffs a while ago. Like, it's just, you know, the, the, the city of Seattle needs the Kraken and what they're doing right now. So I hope everyone kind of comes together and embraces them as well, because, like, this is the time. Get in yeah. on this really fun team. You know, if you're disappointed about the football results, just hop onto hockey. Give it a chance. Yeah, exactly, because this team is on fire right now. They're pushing for the playoffs. It's going to be an exciting, you know, chase and race for that wild for those wild card spots that the Kraken are going to be a part of. This is your time to help get if you if you're a Kraken fan, obviously, I'm assuming you are because you're listening to this. But if you have friends that are sports fans, but they haven't quite hopped on board with the Kraken, like this could be a really, really good time to help get them involved. So I uh, just want to throw that out there. And then if you got a friend 
friend who's disappointed about Kalen DeBoer, <laughs> introduce him to this guy named Dave Haxtell. Yep. <laughs> you know? Hey, look, we know he's not going anywhere. The Steve's not going to have him go anywhere after what happened earlier this year. <laughs> yep, exactly. You know, he's he's not going to leave. So uh, tell everyone, tell your friends. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, all right, so as we transition into the uh, midseason kind of report cards here, RJ, now we had had a lot of people asking if we were going to be doing midseason grades. We, we said we would because so many people wanted it. Um, but then as we were like working on it, we realized that like doing grades is kind of hard mid season. Cause you kind of want to give everybody like, especially as they're on a nine game winning streak, like a positive grade, but with some room for improvement, right. That tends to be what we go with. And, and so we were like, Oh, all these grades look like exactly the same. And so I thought, why don't we do like a positive, like something that we've been really impressed by that these players have been doing, you know, for the first half of the season and then something we'd like to see them maybe work on or, or continue to do uh, the rest of the way that we think could help improve them or, or the team or just that we want to see, because why not? And so yeah. I think that's the that's the way to go. We had a positive response last night on the post game to it. So that's what we're going to be doing. RJ, you've got the order in which we're going to be talking about everybody. So I will turn this over to you. But it does sound like we are starting, as we always do, net out. Because that's how you build a team. At Exactly. That's right. <laughs> we are starting net out here and we're just going to go in order of games played because that seems to make the most sense. And of course, we have to start with Joey Decord. I mean, you, you can't really start anywhere else here. Certainly not when talking about the goaltending this season. Uh, Dylan, what's what's your your positive for Joey Decord? And try not to just say everything. Well, I was going to say all of it. So does that count? <laughs> I mean, I, can't. I know in my notes, it just says everything in yours. It says all of it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh it's, I mean, he's been playing so well, it, just in so many different ways, right? Like he's been a stable force for this team um, while they, when they've needed it, right? They were going through when he came, came in and had to be the starter after Grubauer was out. He, they were going through the transition of changing what they were doing, their style of play, right? And and this is both offensively and defensively. And he was able to come in and be a stabilizing kind of sure thing in net that they could count on while the offense was figuring out how to play a little bit more creatively, while the defense was figuring out how to keep teams to the outside, allow more shots, but make them lower quality shots, right? And he had to be the guy to be in net while they were figuring out the growing pains of that process. And Joey Decord was able to do that. And I think he was able to do that one, just because he's a good goaltender and two, because of his personality too, right? Like he's the exact right kind of person that you would want in that situation, situation just because he gets it and he's going to tell you he gets it and he'll talk to the guys in front of him and he's just going to be unfazed by it, which is what happened. Yeah, I mean, you hit on my thing that I was going to talk about, which was uh, staying true to himself in this whole process, mm -hmm. which I think it can be tempting maybe not to do that when you're, look, a seventh round pick who's tried and tried and tried to get into the NHL. You finally get your big break and you play the game in a different way than just about any other goalie in the NHL. And we kind of had this conversation just to ourselves this preseason and through training camp of like, well, is Joey really going to play the puck? in the same way he did is he going to play the same style of hockey that he did that we saw in Coachella Valley because NHL goalies just don't usually do that and especially for a guy coming in as the backup you know is, is this something that the coaches are going to maybe try and coach out of him a little bit because the teams aren't aren't used to it and no that hasn't been the case at all he's I mean if anything you know he's become more confident with it and and a little bit bolder handling the puck and I think the results have been fantastic so um, like you said he's the right kind of person to be in this situation but I've been impressed with how he's really stayed true to who he is as a goalie and as a person. Oh, definitely. I mean, he's just one of the one of the best people to talk to, one of the best humans around when whenever you're you're there and around the team and everything. He's just he's just so great. Um, it seems crazy, RJ, to even bring this up. But what would you like to kind of see from him? Moving forward, right? Because like there, he's doing so many things well right now. It's um, there's there's not much you could really look at and and say, oh, needs to work on this. 
Yeah, no, I mean, every really risk in, in his game is associated with a reward that's just part of the risk reward that comes with how he plays. Um, but I, I think we may agree on this is like the only thing that's just take care of your body, make sure that, you know, the wear that's on you doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't build up and, and doesn't create an unfortunate situation like last season with Martin Jones, where he got burned out. I think it's two totally different situations. You have an older goalie who plays just a different style versus Joey's a little bit younger. Um, and, you know, he has his process that seems to work for him at Coachella Valley last season, right? He, mm -hmm. that was a grind of a playoffs, five yeah. playoff rounds, uh, you know, games like every other day, or even sometimes back to backs in the playoffs. Cause that's what the Calder cup playoffs is. Um, and he seemed to hold up just fine, but just really make sure you're being aware of that process of taking care of your body. Yeah, no, that's the big thing for me as well. I will go ahead just to, so that we can have two different answers, RJ, cause we kind of agreed on the, on the mm -hmm. first stuff. Um, consider live streaming whatever VR goalie stuff you're doing, <laughs> Joey. Like, I think a lot of fans would be on board with that. And I think that would be another way. To, I think he would become the number one Kraken jersey sold, player jersey sold, if he started doing that, RJ. Gets the gamers involved. Let's go, Joey. Come on. What you know what? You I hiding? like that. <laughs> you can... <laughs> I guess that's a way to motivate him there, yes. you know. Um, but uh, he could also collab with JT Brown. You know, he's exactly. got the Twitch streaming experience. Yep. I mean, it just seems like a like a natural fit. Definitely, definitely. And then, you know, as other goaltenders start getting on board, we could start having off-season VR goalie tournaments. Oh, my gosh. I'm, oh, my, yeah. my, my eSports promoter brain is already going crazy over this. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> Next I'm big eSport, let's go. <laughs> exactly. I'm liking this. Um, all right. Which, which goaltender is up next here, RJ? Uh, up next is Philip Grubauer. So, I mean, this is certainly one when we were thinking about grades where I don't know how you grade anything but an incomplete here yeah just because you know look he's only had i think what 17 games and you know you have the big injury that he's still dealing with but let's look on the positive side i mean what's one thing you've been impressed with uh from philip grubauer this season right so i was kind of impressed with the way he was able to kind of handle things early on in the season where the kraken were really struggling and i mean like from day one of this season moving forward where they lost several games in a row they were low scoring games the team just had no offense but phil grubauer was very very solid in net that was one of the few like kind of bright spots we would talk about as we would do post games for these games where we were just all shell-shocked of like what's going on Philip Grubauer was there and he was very, very solid there. The other thing that I would like to mention, and this is just because he hasn't played a ton this year, he's been obviously injured a lot, but I, I think it doesn't get talked about enough that he does that is a positive. And that's how, how good he is, like kind of out in public, right? And and with fans, he will do stuff over at Queen Anne Beer Hall, right? Like the Oktoberfest stuff. Like he's on, on a team that doesn't necessarily always do the fan outreach thing. Philip Grubauer, I feel like, has been a very, very good face for this team, going out there, meeting fans. He's always kind. He'll, he'll, he'll take pictures with anybody, all that kind of stuff. And I, and I just want to mention that because I think that's something that, again, for a team that doesn't do that a lot, he's, he's really become the face of doing that for me. And um, I really, really appreciate that from him. And so that's something that I want to see continue from him moving forward. Yeah, and I think that was something I was going to bring up was just, you know, that demeanor, whether it's on the ice or, or off the ice. I was going to point to consistency on the ice mm -hmm. because he really played the same way just about every game. And of course, the, the results in front of him kind of tended to vary as the team was very up and down trying to figure out their game. But you always knew what you were getting with Grubauer and you knew that he was going to give the team a chance to win if they played well enough to win. Uh, so on the ice there and yeah, off the ice too. Another thing to mention is, uh, you know, the mask for for Indigenous Peoples Night, Yep. Um, which I, I thought was fantastic and kind of finding a way around the league's, uh, you know, policy there by agreeing to wear it multiple games, even though he only unfortunately just got to wear it for that part of one game. Um, I'm sure he'll wear it at some point when he comes back this season. But, um, you know, he's he's been given a really tough you know situation this season to, to kind of have to deal with. And certainly with success, Joey Decord's having, but he's handling it as well as you can possibly ask. Oh, absolutely. No, that that one's a good one. I mean, the hockey fights cancer mask too, right? Like just mm -hmm. the way that he finds ways of, of being able to promote and, and support these causes, uh, despite the league not always wanting players to do so, uh, has been really, really impressive. And it and it speaks a lot to his character and, and what, you know, he's, he's willing to take that flack behind the scenes kind of thing to put that out there for the public. And I, I think that's definitely something to be admired. Um, 
it's tough when we start talking about what what could be worked on here, RJ, because I mean, I think the immediate re- reaction is just you know, just get healthy, right? Like you just want to see him healthy, want him want him to be able to have whatever workload the team's going to need him to have. And right now, I mean, that's that's the thing that you want to point to and say, well, that's what we'd like to see the rest of the way. Yeah, and it's tough because it seems like, again, we don't have clarity on it, but it feels like maybe he might have taken a step back as he seemed kind of gearing up, ready to go, ready to return near the Winter Classic, and then we haven't really seen him practicing as much since. So, I mean, hopefully that's, you know, working on making sure you're back and really 100% before you come back. Um, And that's, again, as you get older, as a goalie, it's just the toll it takes, the physical toll it takes on your body. You have to make sure to be aware and not push it too hard. And so I guess that would be the, the thing to work on, right, is just make sure you're truly good to go when you do come back. Yeah, definitely, because I'm excited. I want to see him behind this kind of new look for the Kraken, especially defensively, right? Taking more shots, but lower quality shots, right? More from the perimeter. Like, I would love to see him kind of behind the defense doing that, because we haven't really seen that in the first three years of the Kraken, right? At least not to this level that they've been able to keep it up the way they have in front of Joey Decord. But I feel like that's something that could play pretty well to his strengths right we know he's a goaltender he likes to see shots regularly stay in that rhythm I'd like to see him um kind of out there with what they've been doing right now um now RJ are we going to do Chris Drieger it's a small sample size uh but I I hear that you want to bring him in Yes, this was my special request. We were kind of doing a, a four plus game cutoff because that's really where you had a lot of players with three or fewer games and you, you can't really grade them on that small sample size. And then you had Riker Evans with nine, who I definitely do want to include. And then everybody above that who's played more. Um, but this is my one exception to the four game cutoff is Chris Trieger. I know he's only played in one game. He's been on the roster for a lot of games. He's backed up for a lot of games. But I really just want to highlight how great of a teammate he has been. Uh, and it's it's not an easy situation, too, when you're on an expiring deal, you're trying to showcase yourself for other teams uh, so that maybe you get another NHL opportunity next year when the guy in front of you is just playing so lights out that you don't even really get an opportunity. But you would never tell, right, by looking at Chris Trieger that there'd be anything negative from his situation. I mean, he is just so supportive of Joey, whether it's, you know, on the ice, on the bench, giving him some looks after big saves or mm-hmm. or in the locker room. I mean, speaking so highly of Joey and what he's doing. So just wanted to shout out Chris Trieger. If we're doing a whole progress report thing, you know, he's he's the kid in the class that you want to give like the best attitude award, I think. Oh, definitely. Right. I mean, like he's just been he's been so fantastic through this whole thing. Like there have been so many like viral moments to come out of him being around for this team. Right. Whether it's the it's the goalie hugs after the wins or if if it's like things like the other night where after Joey makes the big scorpion save, he just with the with the emotive reaction over there on the bench that the cameras are able to capture. Like it's just a lot of fun to have that around this team that hasn't always had guys like that around on this team so much so yeah I, I really appreciate that and then you know what do we want to see from from them moving forward I'd like to just see him play some more games right like I know Joey's doing fantastic you don't want to stop Joey while he's on this role but you know what Chris Trieger he was a guy who was around from the expansion draft right and he's he's had his own struggles with injuries kind of throughout his tenure with the Kraken and stuff like I just want to see him in a Kraken sweater making saves playing some games Yep. And I'm sure we'll get to see that coming up. He's going to get one of these two games on the back to back and, you know, just keep that rolling. But I wanted to include him here because he's uh, had such a great attitude. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So look into the blue line now, RJ, as we continue from the net out. Uh, Where are we starting with the Kraken defenseman? So because the defense has been so consistent as far as the D pairs and everything, I figure we should just kind of go pair by pair here and start at the top. And on the top D pair, of course, I mean, I'm talking to you, Dylan. So we have to start with Adam Larson. The floor is yours. What have you been impressed with from Adam Larson? I mean, don't just say everything. Oh, well, but it is everything, right? Because it's he's done so All many the time, good things. Everything, he's so yes. many good things. I know. You know what? I've been impressed with his kind of offense this year, right? Like this isn't something that we always talk about with him is is the offense because I'm I'm usually bringing up how well he defends, how well he defends the blue line, all that kind of stuff, and that's all been there this year. But I do feel like this year offensively, he's kind of gone for it a little bit more. I feel like this is the first year that we've seen him really step up and try to be that activated defenseman in 
in the offensive zone in a way that that was, you know, that was like Will Borgen's job or Vince Dunn's job in years past. But I feel like this year, right, especially as it took him a little while to get on the board goal wise to start the year. So I'm, he's really trying to do things. I mean, just the other night he was trying to get there for a backdoor play. Right. Like we haven't seen that a lot from him. And I feel like he's actually like sneaky good at it. Right. Like he has a good awareness for kind of where to be. Maybe the finishing could use a, a little tweak here or there, but he has a really good knack for being where um, a player should be and, and being able to get open. And so I think the thing for me this year that I've been most impressed with to start the season for Adam Larson has just been his kind of offensive game, his offensive awareness, him getting involved a little bit more, even making passes. He'll take the puck down low into the offensive zone and then make a pass, a centering pass, right? Like stuff like that, that we just haven't really seen from him before. Yeah, possibly a bit of Vince Dunn kind of rubbing off on him. I like yeah. how they've really influenced each other over them being a deep pair for so long. Uh, so for me with Larson, like I, I I looked at it and I think I couldn't really point to a part of his game that's all that different than just like the Lars that we always know. So I, I was thinking off ice, actually, being a good sport, you know, yeah. with, with the face on the shirts and everything. I think he was needed off the ice as much as he ever has been this season when the team was going through that eight game losing streak and, you know, just trying to keep things positive and light. And we know that he's low key, maybe the funniest guy on the team. Mm -hmm. And as much as we joke about those shirts turning things around, I think there is something to that. Just making sure that that the guys don't get too down. And then when you do kind of try and ride that wave of positive momentum, you know, that you have something like that that's just a, a players only kind of inside joke type of thing. Um, and, you know, Lars was at the center of that. And I think it, right, it was revenge kind of from Matty Beneers, yeah. it sounds like, for a prank that Larson had pulled. And, and if you time that out, that's right during the losing streak, right? To have someone who's still kind of pulling little pranks like that and keeping the room light was super important in turning things around. Definitely, definitely. No, Lars is a good guy for that kind of stuff. As for what you'd like to see for him the rest of the way, RJ, I mean, this one's, he's, it's an interesting guy for this, I feel like. Right, because, I mean, you could point to issues. I, I guess what I had was just, kind of consistency de defensively which sounds weird to me mm -hmm. you know to talk about Lars with this way but you know before the win streak before the long win streak you know there were some games where the two of us would look at each other and be like is this Adam Larson like he, these are uncharacteristic mistakes that he's making that are leading to some defensive breakdowns so if we are judging it on the full half season body of work I guess that's what I'd I'd say is just consistency defensively and not kind of having those you know, breakdowns where you just lose where you are that just really aren't him. And you haven't seen those over the course of the winning streak, but just making sure that doesn't come back. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like that was one of those things that, you know, also over the winning streak, you feel like you haven't necessarily seen as many of those offensive opportunities. And so I was just going to say, like, thing to thing to work on and still still be developing as the season goes would just be if you are going to be a more offensive player, don't lose what made you so great on the back end, right? Like he, there was times where, yeah, it would maybe lose somebody behind him net front, something like that on the PK. It hasn't maybe been as strong this year as in years past. And so my, my thing was just going to be, you know, as you, as you kind of take a step forward and develop your offensive game a little, don't, don't forget that's st those fundamentals on the back end kind of thing. Yeah. Um, all right. For his D partner, Vince Dunn, RJ, I mean, phew, Dude leads the team in scoring. I, I mean, that's that seems like a good place to start as for what's been going right for him the first half of the season. Yeah, although I'm going to zero in on improvement on the power play because that was the big question mark going into this season is can Vince Dunn become a true power play quarterback that and live up to the contract that he got over the offseason? I think the answer has certainly been yes. You see the confidence that he has walking the blue line. I mean, you saw it last game off that face off, right? It looks like he's going to just walk the whole length of the blue line, but he sees a lane open up, just stops on a dime and throws a puck right at the net. Ty Karche is able to get the tip. I love that goal. Um, but the confidence in moving the puck that he really didn't have last season on the power play everything's just coming together for him. And I think he's certainly the best power play quarterback this team has before the season. I don't think I would have said that actually. I think I said it was Riker Evans was really the best guy in the organization at just quarterbacking a power play, but now it is so clearly Vince Dunn. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. That's, that's is what I legitimately had. Unfortunately, we're agreeing on this, um, but it is like, it, it's been so huge for this team as a team that needed to improve on special teams, right? Like that was it, the, one of those main areas of focus for this team coming out of last season. 
he's he's been like the pinnacle, the guy that you can point to as like the example of how the special teams has improved year over year, right? It is Vince Dunn that you would point to first and foremost, and that's that's had a big impact on this group. I mean, really all year uh, after after he, again you get out of like the weird rough patch to start the season where the team just couldn't do anything offensively. Um, the fact that the power play has been so consistent. Uh, has been a big deal. I'll talk about that with maybe some of the forwards that we get to later, but certainly um, chief among defensemen, it has been Vince Dunn there. Uh, as for what he could work on here a little bit, RJ, this might be controversial, but I'm going to say... I feel like we might agree here. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say the Dundertaker stuff a little bit, right? Like last, yep, I had temper last, on my list. Yep. Last night, coming to the defense of Matty Beneers, that was perfect. That was excellent. But also... Kind of got away with not getting an instigator on that one. I feel like RJ. I feel like a ref could have very easily given him one. Oh yeah, and, should and, have. I'd say. Yeah, and there's been a couple times this year where his temper has gotten the better of him, and it's affected the team. And that's something that I would like to see improved on. Yeah, and you got to find a way to harness it and control it. I don't think you can ever fully get rid of it. You can't take that out of Vince Dunn. That's just no, kind of part, part of who of, he is. Yeah, but but I think when you find a way to channel it, and, and I think last night we got. Undertaker in the absolute best way. Even if he does get an instigator penalty, I don't mind it in that situation. You know, that that's a hit. It is boarding. And, you know, on Matty Beneers, you got to go right after the guy, send an immediate message. And, and in the situation of the game, too, you know a penalty's coming the other way. I know you might negate a power play. That's fine. You're not putting your team short. I, I have no problem with it there. And so I, more of last night and I guess less of, gosh, what was that game where he went and just high stick, you know, the slash in overtime. Yeah, yeah. Should have got away with the high sticking. Less of that. Yes, exactly. I think everybody can kind of agree on that one. Uh, I'm sure the coaching staff would probably agree on that one, actually. Yeah. Um, all right, for the next defensive pairing, we start with Jamie Lexiak or, or William Borgen, RJ? Let's start with the big rig. All right, sounds good. William Borgen. <laughs> William Borgen. There we go. That's what it says on Hockey Reference. It's William Borgen. So that's what all I right. said. Um, all right, so for the big rig, RJ, I mean, look, he's doing tons of stuff great this year i mean the block shots have been incredible from him i mean there's there's been lots of things but the thing that i want to kind of touch on it's just, it's a different special teams thing and that's he's been really good on the pk i feel like he's really been the anchor for the pk units defensively this year has been jamie alexiak he's really kind of taken a, a step forward there in my opinion on um on that first unit pk yeah, he has. I mean, the, the PK has been much improved. And I mean, we don't really notice him a lot on the PK, but that's a good thing. You don't want to be right. noticed on the PK. Um, and, and I was going to go with the shot blocks. I mean, that's the one that stands yeah. out, certainly to me. He's got a huge lead on on Adam Larson even for second place on the team in shot blocks. And uh, they've been at noticeable times, too. It's it's mm -hmm. not just like kind of racking up shot blocks that on, you know, low angle shots, whatever. I mean, this these are important key block shots at important moments of the game uh, i'm going back to last season trying to look at the shot block figures and i mean he was a distant second in shot blocks he had he yeah. had blocked 115 shots all of last season and he's already 101 right now so i mean the pace is just so much higher he's clearly made that a priority yeah, and you know, I talk about like PK wise, he's been that anchor, especially net front. He's really been an anchor there, and I feel like he's worked on that a lot over the course of this last off season, coming into this season, just being more of a net front player. Right? Last year, how many times were were there some you know kind of rough turnovers or rough plays where he would maybe join? Borgen behind the net or he would go behind the net to try to make a play and then there was you know a defensive lapse up front something like that right that was something that was brought up a lot right in post games I remember talking with people with this um, but this year there hasn't been any of those kind of like Jamie Alexiak moments right like he they they just completely stopped like overnight they completely stopped this year he has been so rock solid net front as a presence there and and like i said i kind of pointed it out on the pk but really you could point it out at 5 on 5 too he's his defensive game has really taken a step forward and i think that's where you're seeing those shot block numbers come from too just because he's made it such a point of emphasis to be net front and be present and help out his goaltender, help out his team. Uh, it's It's been really, really great stuff from Jamie Alexiak. As for things he could work on, similar to the way he worked on that, RJ, uh, where, where are you kind of looking for the big rig? 
I mean, at, at first I thought maybe activate a little bit more offensively. We've seen it from him, you know, occasionally this season, but certainly not as much as last year. I, I don't expect yeah. him to match his career high, you know, goal output from last year. But I, I think, you know, just being a little more consistent with, with providing that offensively sometimes, jumping up into the play, I don't particularly mind if, you know, if he doesn't all the time, just because like if you're going to be that rock solid defensively, like I take that. I you know I don't need Jamie Alexiak to be producing offense. I guess it's the same thing I always say is physicality. You know, just a little bit more consistent being physical using that big body. But I, I'm okay if you save that for later in the season in the playoffs because the last thing you want is to be getting hurt again. Yeah, exactly. I I am kind of going to go with the offensive side of things, and this is what I'm going to say, Jamie. I, you're listening. I know you are. Uh, this is <laughs> this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to. Um, you know, the coaching staff, and I want you to ask them to be placed as a net front player on the power play because that's what I want to see, RJ. That's what I want to see from Jamie Alexiak. At some point in the second half of the season, I want him out there on the power play as a net front presence because I miss that. I am going with the offense. I miss when he would step up and try to be offensive and he'd come in and he'd circle the zone with the puck and he'd generate his speed, use his good edge work, kind of coming around the back of the net. I miss those moments. Those are so fun. Yeah, he has, and he's got sneaky good hands. I've said he's part of that optimal shootout lineup of Larson, Alexiak, and Borgen. So, and he's been bringing out the toe drag a little bit more this season, whether it's in practice or even in games sometimes. So, you know, trust yourself, you know, embrace the dangles. Yep, definitely. Uh, Speaking of Borgen, Will Borgen here uh, is the next person up, RJ. And for me, I mean, look, it's a split between just keep being lovable Right. Like that's something you can, you know, you shouldn't have to work too hard at that. But I, I just love uh, love how lovable Will Borgen is. But really, did you know, RJ, that from an analytics standpoint, uh, Will Borgen is the best penalty killing defenseman on this team because he is. I didn't know that. Yes. I can't say I'm all that surprised, but still, I yeah. mean, good for him. Yeah, he's taken a real step up on the penalty killing side of things. And so that's what I wanted to highlight is what he's been doing so well this year. Well, he's killing penalties. And you know what? That's a big deal. It's a really important job, especially as a defenseman. And so I, I, that's that's for me the thing that I've been impressed with to start the season. I'm going to go with the other side of the puck, and I'm going to say shot selection. Because one thing that Will Borgen, I think, had to work on in the past was throwing a lot of pucks right at def- at uh, opposing forward shin pads from the point, yeah. right? Not getting as many pucks through in, in key areas. And I think he's gotten a little bit better with that shot selection. I, I certainly saw it last game against Columbus where he's able to kind of walk the blue line a little bit, find some of those openings, and throw pucks on net that can generate dangerous rebounds. So those are just the, like the finer parts of his game that I think he is working on. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, just to be clear, like what I was going based off of for the penalty killing numbers was on ice expected goals against per 60 and on ice high danger shot attempts against per 60. And he definitely leads the way in both of those. I mean, if if you've got a better thing I could look at for penalty killing for defensemen, let me know. But those seemed like good ways, (laughs) good places to start anyway. Um, As for what he could work on, RJ from Will Borgen, I was going to say score more. (laughs) Like, yeah, I did. we know he's got it in him, only one goal this year. So kind of interesting that we come from the two different sides there. Um, but I, I miss, you know, good old Billy Borgs getting getting some goals. Yeah, I do too. And and that's was the other side of the shot selection. Like he's shooting more for other guys to score, but you can just let it rip sometimes. I, I agree. I just, you look at the numbers, the offensive numbers, the counting stats, and they aren't what they were last season. Yeah. Um, That being said, he's been bringing the physical game. He's been focusing on things defensively. He's been playing really, really well. Um, For the next D pair, RJ, where are we starting? We start with Dumoulin. We start with Schultz. What are we doing? Uh, Let's start with Brian Dumoulin. (laughs) Okay. Brian Dumoulin. (laughs) Brian Dumoulin. Um, Look, the thing that I've been impressed with Brian Dumoulin was the incredible adjustments he made after a rough start to the season. Right. I think, you know, this is a team that started off rough. We've talked about that several times already, but, you know, things really started off rough for Brian Dumoulin. He was trying to figure out, you know, it's his first time with the new team, all that kind of stuff. Right. Like he's been in Pittsburgh for so long, trying to figure out how he fit in, where he fit in on the group, adjusting to being on the third pairing, all that kind of stuff. But he really did. Like, he put in the effort to get better, and he got so much better, RJ. Right? Brian Dumoulin now has become this, like, kind of rock-solid, dependable defenseman for us. And if you were to tell me that four or five games into this season, I would have said, did everybody else get hurt? Like, what happened, right? But no, <laughs> he's he's really worked on things. He made adjustments as for, you know, when he needs to start 
his transition from skating backwards to forwards because that was getting him killed early on in the season when he can pinch up and learning you know where the forwards like to cover for the defenseman when his other when his defensive partner can cover for him so he's not taking as many poor chances and and too many risky plays offensively like he's just done everything he can to improve upon the rough start to the season he had and I love when players do that because it shows that they take initiative they're listening to their coaches they're watching the film they're seeing what they're doing wrong and then they're going out there and they're actively improving on it and that's how teams get better and that's how teams ultimately win championships yeah we shouldn't be surprised to see that from a veteran player like Dumoulin and and if he couldn't figure that out if he was still a liability defensively then nothing else would matter including what I'm about to bring up as my positive which is being such a good mentor uh to Riker Evans yeah and and I think you know that might be the biggest long-term impact on this franchise is just how he's being able to play with Riker Evans who came up and got thrown right into the NHL and on a deep pair with Brian Dumoulin they tried him with Dumoulin they tried him with Schultz and I, I think he's just a much better fit with Dumoulin. I mean, it's great having a defenseman who's so smart and so savvy that they can, you know, really adjust to whatever Riker Evans wants to do and make sure that Evans can be confident in the way that he needs to be to play at his best. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing I've noticed from Dumoulin. And I think that's ultimately, you know, he's on a two year deal. Like that's where he's going to fit longer term uh, is as that mentor to Riker Evans and someone that can really bring him along into the league. Yeah, I actually had that written down first, and I thought RJ's going to go with that one. Let me go with the other. Ah, uh, you know me too well, don't <laughs> you? Know. Yes. As for as for what Dumoulin could work on, I know I just talked about two defensemen um, being really good on the PK. Brian Dumoulin has struggled on the PK this year with the net front defending. That that would be the place that I'd like to see him kind of next focus his his abilities as for identifying things in his game and then improving upon them actively. I think the PK is w- where I would start. Yeah, and I was going with something similar. I was going to say just in the D zone, making sure you have your man covered because that's been a little bit inconsistent. It, you know, even the things that he knows he needs to do, like I, I think of that play, it was a deflection right in front of the net. I can't, can't remember who the opponent was or that game, but I remember the video clip going through where he's right on the guy. He just doesn't take the stick away. Just a few moments like that that maybe you want to clean up, but like overall, he's been fine, but just the you know, getting a little bit more consistent with some of those. Yep, exactly. Uh, Justin Schultz up next here, RJ, at least based on the order you've been going, I assume he's up next. Yes. Yes. And uh, Justin Schultz, is it crazy that I'm going to say like the positive for me to start the season from him has been his defensive play. Like he actually was, especially like when his his partner and Brian Dumoulin was struggling to start the season, Justin Schultz was there to pick up that slack in a big way. Yeah, he was. I mean, you know, not necessarily what you always expect from a more exactly. offensively minded defenseman like him. Uh, but he was able to lock things down pretty well defensively. It's It's been a big part of this win streak. Um, and also, I've been impressed by, you know, his his attitude with everything going on with Riker Evans, too. He was a scratch for kind of an extended period of time. I know he was technically injured and all of that. We don't know you know, what, what the details of that were, but he got, you know, hit in the face and had to sit out for a while, but he's come back and, you know, given a chance in the lineup, he stepped up and he's produced. I mean, you look at the goal he scored a couple games ago, just making a play, jumping into the zone and, and sticking with a puck. That's the stuff we know that he can bring, but I know it can be discouraging sometimes when it looks like, especially on an expiring deal, you might be losing your spot in the lineup, but he hasn't let that affect him. No, no, he's, he's been a great teammate there. As for what he can work on, this is again kind of crazy after last season quarterbacking the power play. Like I feel like that mm-hmm. he's kind of taken a step backwards quarter quarterbacking the power play. I mean last year he was the guy for that and this year that title's really shifted over to Vince Dunn. I'd I'd like to see him kind of get back to his ways of being that kind of offensive wizard back there when the Kraken have the man advantage. Yeah, that's part of what I identified. I said just play with the puck in general too, whether it's in the D zone, whether it's quarterbacking the power play just a bit of sloppiness there kind of whiffing on plays that we're not used to seeing him do um, just a lack of confidence, breaking the puck out of the zone. We've seen some big turnovers recently from him in the D zone, just shoring that kind of stuff up. And it's stuff we know he can do. I mean, this yeah. is very much stuff you can work on um, because you know, it's, it's just things like that. If you clean them up, if you work on it, it can get a lot better. Yeah. And then Riker Evans to round out the defenseman. I mean, look, he's did everything he could. Uh, he was, he was playing so well, four points in his nine, games with this team and you know what I I think because I'm sure you'll probably take something offensively here I want to talk about how rock solid he was defensively in those nine games 
yes, he was playing pretty conservative, but still he understood what he needed to do offense, uh, defensively, especially for a team that was really struggling when he kind of came into the lineup, right? That was an area that they really needed to improve upon. And he just made sure that he was solid in and around the crease. He made sure he always took the open man. He made sure he had his head on a swivel. He made sure, you know, he was careful about going off into corners or trying to chase loose pucks, all that kind of stuff. And then he did the other thing that I felt like a lot of the Kraken defensemen needed the reminder to do, which was just make easy outlet passes. You get the puck, just go go to the boards, get it out of the zone, just move it up the ice. And that's, I think, Riker Evans, really what, sh- what stood out for me as a young defenseman coming in was how solid he was able to play in his own zone. Well, you were right, Dylan. I am going to go with something a little bit more offensively minded. Uh, you, again, you know me too well. Uh, but the confidence, not being intimidated, whether it's decisions with the puck or also just positioning in the offensive zone, being able to jump down behind the net even. We saw him get his first NHL point that way. Um, that's the kind of thing that if you're a rookie defenseman and you're worried about not making a mistake that might cost you a spot in the lineup, a lot of guys might be hesitant to do. But, I mean, there was just no hesitation from Riker Evans whatsoever. And and part of that is what we mentioned with Dumoulin earlier, being a, a mentor to, yeah. to Evans, knowing that I can jump up in the play, I can make this play, I can be myself, and dumo has got me back there. Yeah. Um, and just to see that from him, that confidence, um, that makes all the difference. Oh, it really does. No, he was super, super impressive offensively, although we, that was to be expected, I feel like, from him. Uh, as for what I'd like to see the rest of the way from Riker Evans, I mean, one, just more games would be great. Um, but I'd just like to see consistency. I mean, this is something that all young players run into and, and struggle with as they start their NHL careers. And so the thing that I would say to like kind of focus on is just focus on being consistent with what you're doing, your approach to the game, when you take your chances, all of that kind of stuff, because that's kind of what gets all the young players through um, those rough patches that they experience is just kind of going back, keeping things simple and, and being consistent with their attitude. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's basically what I was going for. I was just going to say build that that process that you have. And I think even having these games where he's a healthy scratch can kind of help you build that process, get in the routine, the NHL routine of just going about practices and games and everything the, the way that you want to do it. He had that one rough game that caused him to be taken out of the lineup. I think it was just for one game as Schultz mm-hmm. came back. But, you know, just fewer of those because that's the kind of thing a coach is going to look at and might cost you some games later on down the season. Yep, definitely. So now as we turn our attention to the forward group, RJ, um, let's wh- where are we going to start here as we've oh boy. So we, I'm going to sort it by points. These two. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. We got to we got to shorten these up a little bit. Shorter shifts, Dylan. Yes. Um, but we'll start with uh, we'll go by points and we'll start with Oliver Bjorkstrand. Uh, the Kraken's all-star. What what better place yeah. to start? Uh, what's impressed you from him this season? I mean, really, it's everything. But I think the big thing to focus on has been... I mean, I'm, I'm really split between the power play and his ability to play with so many different lines and kind of help get the Kraken going. Was one of those two things yours? Yes, it was the ability to play with so many different right, lines I'm and players, talk... being the line fixer. All right, then I'll talk about how he's been on the power play. Um, here's something incredible, RJ. Imagine this, if you will. A Seattle Kraken player on the power play who c- collects the puck, walks in, and takes a shot. Sounds pretty incredible. Sounds almost unbelievable. And yet that's what Oliver Bjorkstrand has done this year on the power play is just he's been a confident shooter. And I don't mean like last year with Tolvanen where it was just, look, he's sitting there with his stick in the air ready to take a slap shot. And Vince Dunn is just going to slowly <laughs> throw it over to him and that's going to be the play. No, I mean, Bjorkstrand, he's, he's shooting from a similar place each time. But he keeps his head up. He's not just throwing it into a guy who's ready to block the shot. He's actually there to shoot to score. And he's going to make moves around guys if he has to. He's going to hold on to the puck a little bit longer if he needs to. Or he'll get the quick release. He's just being a shooter, RJ, on the power play. And I love to see it. Yeah, deadly from so many different spots with that release. Um, but as you may, may have predicted, I'm going to go with uh, being the line fixer this season. I know last season, um, Dave Haxel referred to Jaden Schwartz as the line fixer. But this season, it's been Oliver Bjorkstrand. They've had to move him up and down the lineup to a bunch of different spots. And it's been crucial given how many forward injuries this team has had. Uh, when you've already played more forwards this season than all of last season combined, you need somebody who's going to be able to provide consistent offense no matter where you put him. And that's been Bjorkstrand. 
Bjorkstrand. I mean, no matter what line mates he has, uh, no matter what kind of ice time, what situation, you could set your clock to him scoring, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when the team had so much difficulty scoring goals, especially early on, he was the one guy who was able to do it and, and kind of kept them afloat and I think got them some early points uh, in the standings that they you know, really need going forward. Yeah. As for, as for things to, to look out for the rest of the way. Um, I mean, the big one is those all-star jerseys, Bjorky find a way to get a different all-star Jersey. That, that thing is, those things are terrible. <laughs> Yeah, they are. They are so ugly. I guess stay healthy before the All Star game. That's yeah. the one thing. Just just work on that because we know that curse exists. Yeah, that was the real thing for me. Was just you know watch out for some of the hits. Like he takes some big hits sometimes because of the way he plays, especially in the offensive zone. Being more of an East West player can leave you open to some of those big open ice hits. So just you know keep your head up. You, you know. Just watch out for those sometimes. Yeah. He always seems to pop right back up. But he as does. we've learned from with Maddie Beneers too, like that's great. Until you don't. Exactly, exactly. Um, Ellie Tolvin in here next up, RJ, uh, as, I've, as I've deduced your pattern, I believe. Um, Ellie Tolvin in, look, the first thing I have here for him is just keep being, well, I put a bog time player, but I meant a big time player. I don't think he needs to visit swamps too much here, RJ. Uh, I think he just needs to keep being a big time player for this team because that's what he's been really since he's come over from Nashville. Yeah, and I've been impressed with all the different ways that he's scoring goals too. I mean, we last season we learned he's not just the the one-dimensional player, just offense only kind of guy that maybe he was billed when he came over from Nashville. We found out he was a complete 200-foot player. Uh, but now we're seeing all the different ways he can create offense too, and it's not just with his shot. The shot, of course, is what gets the headlines. But um, you know, deflecting the puck, going to the net, going to some of those areas that you know are, are harder to get to. I think of that goal he scored to open up the winter classic scoring, right? Going right to the front of the net, making a nice tip. And I think we're seeing a lot more of that from him, those deflections that work net front, uh, just the varied ways to score. And that's a way to keep your scoring consistent. That's a way to, you know, kind of shooting percentage proof your results. Yeah, I mean, he's just been consistent, right? We talked about that with Bjorkstrand. He's been consistent all year, too. The thing to work on, you talk about his, his ability to score in all these different ways, and you're 100% true. That's all 100% true got to figure out how to score on the power play he has yet to do so this year rj and so that's the thing that i would like to see in the second half of the season was is i want a ellie tolvin and power play goal yeah that would be very nice and we saw a couple of those failed telegraphed slap shots last game uh you know you do have to kind of work around a little bit more use that versatility honestly i if if you're gonna just do that and, and you want somebody else. I, I just put somebody else on the power play personally. Mm -hmm. I guess my thing to work on too is that should it come to this, you never know what the injury situation is going to be as we hold our breath on Baneers and Burakovsky, but see if you can replicate those results away from Yanni Gordon, Oliver Bjorkstrand. And I wonder if that's something you hate to ever break up that line, but you never know. Sometimes injuries may force you to do that. Sometimes, I don't know, I think with his contract situation coming up and being an RFA and maybe having to commit to him longer term, you might even want to see what he can do away from those guys, just so you have a better idea yeah. of, you know, who he is as a player. And, uh, you know, I guess try and adapt to different line mates should the situation arise. Yep, definitely. Jared McCann, RJ. I mean, he's, he's, he's back on the board. It was a rough nine game stretch there for him. He's back on the board. Where are you starting with what you've liked from him um, to start the season? Uh, I've liked, I mean, I'm going to go similar to Tolvin. I've liked the versatility from Jared McCann. They've needed him in a lot of different spots with a lot of different line mates. I mean, even being fourth line center these last couple games. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I'll also touch on, you know, the attitude from him as well. Um, I, I, they talked to him, I, I think on one of these road games before the game about mm -hmm. being on that fourth line and having that role. And he's just like, you know what, whatever works, whatever helps the team we're winning, it's yep. working. Don't care about ice time. You know, he's the ultimate team player. He is. He is. He has always been the team first guy for this group. I mean, right down to the contract he signs, right? Like it's it's very much that way. And <laughs> even uh, after last game, he said, "I want to. Yeah. I want to thank Ron for giving me that deal, for yeah. giving me that contract." Like I, Ron should be thanking you. I know. I know. It's crazy. Uh, he's just been such a good player. I mean, you know, you you touched on all the good stuff there, right? Like I I echo all of that sentiment, and then just the fact that look. 
on a team that struggles offensively from time to time to find a go-to guy who can be that guy for him, for the team, he's always been that guy, right? And he did that again earlier this season. When they were struggling to score to kick off the year, he was still there scoring goals for them, giving them a chance night in, night out to kind of find the depth further down the lineup. And um, that's just something that very few guys in this league are able to do and he's able to do it. So I really like that from him on the flip side, RJ, I would like to see him kind of become a little bit more of a dynamic player if possible, right? Whether that's creating better chances for himself or in situations like on the power play, maybe becoming a better passer or better playmaker um, for the guys out there. I think that's really the one place offensively that he has any room to improve, right? Like just in his game in general, because otherwise he's just such a solid, complete player who can, you know, PK and do all that thing, all those other things for you. I really feel like sometimes on the power play, if he was able to be a little bit more of a playmaker from that half board, um, you could see the the whole unit really take a step up yeah i think so and and it's again he's uh the power play production just the counting stats it's there i mean he's yeah. doing quite well um but I, I think yeah there's still that just that element on the power play that i get he had seven power play goals last season he has six this season so like i i hate to complain but it feels like it's been a while since we've seen that production so i guess more consistent with it on the power play yep uh now okay <laughs> Now I don't know what we're doing here, RJ, because there are three players tied at 19 points. So where are we starting? Uh, let's start with um, Matty Beniers. Well, right. Let's go with him because he's first in my notes. All right. So the the place for me is, look, Matty does a great job of driving possession regardless of his line mates. We talked about that earlier this season, but I, I'll bring it up again. But really for what it is, is... He has turned into the player that Ron Francis said they were drafting back in 2021 when they drafted him, which is that true, complete two-way center down the middle who is just a smart player, capable of driving possession, all that stuff. Matty Beniers has turned into that. He has blossomed into that. He is a consistent, hardworking guy who you can go out there and you know is going to be dependable. You can depend on him. And I absolutely love that for him. For him to have turned into what, you know, one of the, the greatest hockey players ever said, look, I see these aspects of me and him. For him to already have reached that level at the age of 21, I think is really, really impressive. Yeah, and I've been impressed with the perseverance, too, because, I mean, he went through kind of a rough stretch, certainly, you know, from a scoring perspective this season. And I, I know it was frustrating for him. I mean, anyone who was watching those games could kind of see the frustration there for Matty Beniers. His pucks just weren't going in for him. He was generating offense. He was doing good things for his line. But he pushed through that, and, and he came out the other side. And that's not easy to do as a young player in the NHL. Um, so that's what's impressed me the most is just the, the perseverance from him. Yep, and then on the flip side, Side, uh points man like just points right <laughs> and i know this is probably something that's been bugging maddie Beniers too but unfortunately the realities of the world are if you want people in other markets to start recognizing you for all the good things you're doing you have to have counting stats to go alongside them you can be one of the best players but until it's either 15 years of you doing that or you produce points other markets aren't going to see it yeah, absolutely have to improve there. And I, I'm as far as how, I mean, I'd say vary the shot selection. I know I've been on him about this for a little while now. And he did. You know, when he busted out of that slump, he was shooting to different areas of the net. He was kind of, um, you know, he was having yeah. a release that was a little different. That's what I was yes, getting at. I was yeah. like, you know, it's not that same telegraphed, you know, you, you wind up the same way and you're always going just above the pad, just below the glove. And I think he's kind of gotten back to that a little bit. I think, you know, he could use a reminder, just vary that shot selection. It was working for you. And I think some of the goal scoring has slowed down a little bit. I know he recently uh, just got one right in his spot, you know, perfect shot, exactly how you want it. But I think just he needs to keep that present that, you know, you have to vary the way you shoot the puck because goalies are going to get wise to it. Yep. Everly or Schwartz, who you want to do next? Uh, let's go with Jaden Schwartz. All right. I'll let you start this because my good thing rolls right into my work on thing. Okay. So I'll let you have that transition there. I mean, I guess what I've been most impressed with is just the net front beast that Jaden Schwartz has become. I mean, it's kind of the thing that stands out the most with his game and, um, you know, whether it's on the power play, whether it's even strength, just going to those tough areas. 
we knew he was capable of it. We talked about last year, like he's one of the few crack and willing to go net front, but he's reached another level with that this season. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, he, he definitely has. I mean, I'll take a brief moment just to shout out his ability to come in on draws and, and win at nearly mm-hmm. a 60% clip with a, f- a decent sample size there now, uh, especially given the injuries that he had earlier in the year. But yes, it's being a power play beast, scoring more goals on the power play than you're doing at even strength. He is like we saw when he left the lineup, what it did to the power play. And then instantly when he came back, what it did for the power play. And it was night and day difference. So Jaden Schwartz to start the season, incredible on the power play. What can you work on? Find a way to do it at even strength, right? Find a way to score and have that same level of impact at even strength the rest of the way. Um, whether that's, you know, now that now that the offense is, is allowed for a little bit more creativity, whether it's conversations with your line mates, all that kind of stuff. But finding a way to be that kind of net front player at five on five, I think, would be would just help him kind of elevate to that next level. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, my my thing to work on, as always, just stay healthy. Yeah, you know, I, I know it's been great going to the net front, go to those dirty areas. Just want him healthy for the playoffs because the Kraken are a different team when he's out there. Yep, yep. I I feel, and that. it seems like he has been. I, this is not a bad thing. Like no. I, I don't want to criticize this, but it seems like he has been practicing more this mm-hmm. season and practicing in in full uniform and everything. Like. I don't I don't mind the tracksuit routine a little bit more if it's going to keep him healthy. Oh, exactly. I don't think anybody does Um, with Jordan Everly. I mean, like the place that I will always go back to and this this always gets reinforced whenever I'm either out there with the team on a road trip or I take a trip up to Seattle and I'm around it. There is just what an incredible like leader slash locker room presence Jordan Everly is in just keeping things very like focused in the present for the guys around him. Right. Like I feel like he's just so good at that. And it always, it always, it doesn't take me aback cause like I expect it now, but it's, it's, I'm always impressed by it whenever I'm around the team, whenever I'm in a locker room situation, whenever I hear him speak to the media or speak to his fellow players, it's just his leadership. Right. And that's just something that I, I wanted to highlight. If we're talking about good things about him, that's what I want to highlight. Yeah, definitely. And I, I had something kind of similar to that. And it was his leadership in regards to Matty Beniers, because it's difficult when your line mate, who's really the future face of the franchise, right, is struggling so much in a season like this. And basically, the two of them have been kind of attached at the hip as far as the line combinations have gone. And I think Everly's done a really good job of keeping Matty kind of level headed and, and ensuring him, look, I've, I've been through struggles in my past. Heck, I played for the Oilers. You know, <laughs> I, things are going to get better for you. And, and I think Everly's been huge for Maddie in that regard. Definitely. And then as for, for things I'd like to see the rest of the way, I want you to take a cultural anthropology class, Jordan Everly, and I want you to figure out what all the good luck like deities are out there, all the good luck tokens that you can go out and collect <laughs> so that you can improve on the 6.2 shooting percentage, because I know he's a better player than that, right? Like he's a better scorer than that. We all know that he knows that he's just been unlucky this year. And so I just want him to go out there and find a way to turn that luck around yeah and i guess i'll go a little bit more specific with that kind of like with the veneers thing just learn how to convert from in tight he gets so many chances where he's right at the side of the net with the puck in close i mean there are some moves you can use to open up the goalies pads a little bit try and uh, stuff those pucks in you know maybe work on that a little bit in practice yep alexander wenberg I mean, look, I think the thing that that all of us have discovered this year watching Alexander Wenberg play, RJ, is that he's got one of the the sickest releases on his shot of anybody on this team. Like, oh my gosh. It feels like all, what, he scored um, seven goals this season. It seems like they're all just absolute beauties. They are. Like, they are all fantastic. So, so Alexander Wenberg, like, what have you been doing? Great. Like, you've been scoring beautiful goals. Like, keep that up. Yeah, and for once, my improve need to improve for Wenberg isn't necessarily shoot more because I feel yeah. like he's kind of got it down as far as he's shooting the right amount when he needs to and he's converting yep. when he does. Um, and, and so I, I'm struggling to think of something for him to power work play. On. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I'm just of the opinion he probably shouldn't be on the power play, but. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm just saying that's it's the power play. Um, Yanni Gord, RJ. Uh, oh my gosh, Yanni Gord. Like, where? I'll let you start on him, but like, it's Yanni Gord. I mean, just basically having to be a, a de facto number one center and take on some of the toughest matchups for the Kraken all season and thriving in that role. 
I mean, that's that's incredible what he's been able to do. Um, I, I I know he can handle tough matchups. I know he can be an impressive center that can dominate sometimes from game to game in the NHL, but to do it as consistently as he's been able to do it and to elevate his line mates the way that he has, just fantastic. Yeah, it for me, I mean, it's it's Yanni Gord kind of finding himself around the New Year mark, right? And he's he's back to being that kind of pesty, you know, net front player. He's getting under people's skin. He's got you know three three guys jumping on top of him right as the whistle blows, like doing all of that stuff. And then he always leaves those scrums with a smile, like he's he's back to doing that. And that was missing a little bit earlier on in the season. And I'm happy to see that back for him because I think that's when he plays his best hockey is when he's he, he's in that zone. He's he's vibing that vibe right, and and that's when he's at his best. So I love to see that from him. Yeah, my area of improvement was just more pepper pot, yeah. be that way a little bit more. And I think, you know, with the new year, new Yanni theme that you've pointed out, I think he has been. Yeah. Uh, but that's just something to continue going forward because we didn't see it a whole lot at the end of 2023. Yeah, I mean, there's not I'm with you, right? Like kind of continuing to do that is really the area to improve. So I guess I'll just go a little bit different, which is um, try your hand out at some magic, maybe. Right. I mean, he was able to magically get his helmet down the front of his jersey <laughs> and then back out. So maybe he's got like, you know, when he when he gets looking towards retirement, he, he'll have a second career as a little magician. Yeah, you can hide a rabbit in there or some doves. Yeah. Like, you know, take take the showmanship is really what magic's all about. Yanni, take that to the next level next game. Let's see that. He's a natural Pittsburgh. showman too. He is. That, would, be, that works. He'd be really good, actually. That would be a lot of fun, I feel like. <laughs> um, Ty Cartier, RJ, young guy coming into the lineup. And look, I feel like he's doing exactly what he's needed to do to start this year, which is be a little bit more of an energy guy for this group, right? Just bring that hardworking, tenacious attitude that he has game in, game out that he showed us last year in the playoffs, that he showed us at Coachella Valley doing all the little things right. And that's what Ty Cartier has done to start the season. Yeah, no, I've, I've been impressed by him being able to kind of take some of the things that were working for him over a small sample size and doing that as an NHL regular. I, I think he's adjusted, you know, about as well as you'd expect. He's getting about 12 minutes of ice time a night, so he's not getting the chance to play a ton, but he's, he's added something to every line that he's been on. I think there's a reason that he's in the lineup right now when they have everybody healthy and they have tough decisions to make over maybe a Kyler Yamamoto. Yeah, exactly. And look, his his openness to going over and playing center too when they needed him to. Like that's a big deal as well. Um the thing that I would like to see from him and this this is, you know, for the rest of this year but also just as he takes the next steps in his career is look, he's he's great at throwing the body around. Um, and being physical on the forecheck, like he's one of the best guys on this team, really, if you want to be honest with about it. He's really, really good at that. I would love to see him kind of use his size and transition that into being more of a power forward when he has the puck. Right. I'd like to see him drive the net a little bit more, maybe come down the middle a little bit more and just be a little bit more of that old school, traditional power forward. Because I feel like this team doesn't really have somebody like that. He's got all the, 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 the physical tools to do it. And it seems like he has the mindset for it, too. So I'd love to see that from him, because I think that could help take his offensive game to the next level. Yeah, I mean, for me, you mentioned the hits. That's obviously a big part of his game. And I know he's tied for third on the team in hits, but I miss some of those bigger hits that really just make you stand up out of your seat and get the whole team going. And you know, kind of like Yanni being the pepper pot and getting involved in a scrum. You know, when Ty Karche has a guy lined up in the railroad tracks and, and really gets a big hit on him, that gets the team going. And I haven't noticed that as much this season as I did, whether it was last year's playoffs or, or kind of early on when he's really trying to make an impression. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, maybe this is, you know, too much to ask because I know it's not easy to get a guy lined up and make a really big hit, but just have some of the larger hits instead of just you know just getting in there on the four check consistently yeah some of that's situational like i feel like that's easier to do in the playoffs where guys really make sure to hold on to it till that last moment, that's true right? that's so true I, and I, i'm I, sure we will see it yeah, come come playoff uh, yeah, time but yeah I, i'm there with you though i understand what you're saying uh Kaylor yamamoto rj i mean look, he's he's a player he's done a lot for this team when he's when he's come in i think he's done exactly what they've needed him to which is be depth scoring Right. Like that's, that's what they brought him in to be. And that's what he's done. And that's what I've been impressed with um, for the first half of the season. RJ was, you know, I don't know that he's ever really at the NHL level been put in this spot where he's going to have to be a, you know, borderline in the starting lineup night to night kind of guy on the fourth line. But he's he's adjusted to that really well. And he's contributed a lot of goals for them. 
Yeah, and the way that he's done it has impressed me too, because I didn't really watch a whole lot of him before he came to the Kraken. And so I was kind of getting acquainted with his game as he came to Seattle. I didn't realize how good he was net front. Looking at his mm -hmm. size, at his build, you wouldn't think that he would go to the dirty areas of the ice as much as he does. But he really doesn't have any fear. He will go to the places that you need him to go. And he's, he doesn't shy away. And so that's really impressed me because I just didn't realize that was his game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think um, as for what I'd like to see from him is maybe just being a little bit more of a dynamic playmaker, especially now that the offense kind of shifted to to something that supports that. I feel like he was at his best in the old system where it was very much everybody, you knew exactly what your job was in that cycle that they were trying to create. And I felt like he fit very well into that. And I feel like since they've been on the winning streak, since they kind of changed things up a little bit, He's been a little bit more dependent on who he's been playing with to find that chemistry to show off his creative skills. I'd like him to just kind of have those all the time. But I mean, you know, who wouldn't want that for anybody? Right. And I guess I'd like him to just see if he can adapt to this new style of play. Because, look, the style of play is staying there. You know, they're yeah. going to be more defensively minded, trying to avoid mistakes. And that's really the next challenge that he has coming up for him is, uh, you know, can you be a player that can be depended upon to play exactly how you need to play in all three zones defensively and, and being safe with the puck as well? Because that style of play, too, it, it requires you to be safe with the puck when you have it in the offensive zone and you know maybe pass up a shot if you need to to kind of work the puck around and just prevent chances from going into your own net um so we haven't seen him get too long of a look with the new system yet but that's kind of next on his plate i think yep and then brandon tan of rj <laughs> oh man where, where to begin i mean heck he's he's been a, a top six player he's been on the second line mm -hmm. for most of this season I, I mean that alone has just impressed me i didn't know he had that in him yeah he's been really good at supporting his teammates and everything but i think the place that, that the conversation starts and ends with is on the pk right the pk when he was out of this lineup when he missed time with injury was abysmal and the moment he came back the pk got right back to doing what they did because he is just such a hard working player he puts 110 percent into every shift he blocks the big shots he stays out there even though they sting him you can see it but the way he's able to step up into passing lanes and kind of he just has this sixth sense of exactly where to be to disrupt what the opponent's power play is trying to do just to take away that extra little pass that they want to do his head's not even like looking at it right like he just magically sits in those spots and i know that's because he just he must watch tape he's done it for so long he's just he he's really studied this and perfected it as a craft but it's his pk work is really just next level and it's something that i would use if i was a coach at any level coaching whether it's kids or other professional athletes i would be showing them tape of brandon tanev on the pk and just say look at how he's studying this do that yeah it's been night and day when he's been in on the pk versus out i mean as far as things to improve dylan is it too much to ask to be able to score on a breakaway uh, i was going to take it to the next level empty net <laughs> yeah we'll start there we'll start there <laughs> That's the that's the real place. Um, Tomas Tatar, RJ, only played 11 games with the team. He's got six points, though. Really helped wake up that top line with Matty Beneers and Jordan Eberle. And that's, I think, the big place to start was... He just, he came in, he did a great job adapting to his new surroundings right away. That's something that, you know, is always tough to do as a professional athlete, uh, given that there's so much that goes on when you are traded mid-season in your own life and, and your, the life of your family and all of that stuff. For him to come in and help get two guys going that were really struggling the first half of the year, I mean, I think all Kraken fans will forever be thankful to have Tatar around for that. Definitely. I mean, he's a controlled entry machine. That's what impressed me the most. Mm -hmm. You can see it on all the analytics pages, right? He's, oh, fantastic at controlled entries. But when you watch it, game in, game out, how he's able to get over the blue line, stop up, and just create some space for his line mates. Like, it, it's something that is a lot easier said than done, mm -hmm. uh, but it's been a big part toward uh, revitalizing that first line. Yeah, and then, you know, on top of it, those those beautiful dangles he's got on some of the goals he scored are just f really fun to watch. Um, as for what I'd like to see, like, kind of the rest of the way, 
I mean, he hasn't been around too long. I guess one of the things is I'd like to see him maybe see if he could work his way onto the power play unit, right? One of the two power play units and maybe show up there just because, look, controlled entries has been something that the power play units have struggled with historically for the Seattle Kraken, RJ. I wouldn't mind Tatar being able just to enter the zone for him. Then he could go off on a change. That's fine. But if he could just be the guy that can help keep it in the zone or get them back in the zone quickly so that they could get set up, I feel like that's really the only thing that's been missing from their power play still. Yeah, he's a guy I could see just fit in into that Tolvanen spot, maybe, if you wanted to go with a different look besides the one-timer, someone who can be a little bit more of a playmaker, use that vision. Uh, honestly, I didn't have anything in my notes because I think just the way he's playing is is perfect. I wouldn't really change a thing yet. 11-game sample size, like, I'm sure yeah. things will come up, but just keep doing what you're doing, basically. Yeah, well, I mean, mine's basically cheating because it's really more of something for, like, Dave Haxtell than it is for Tatar, right? Yeah. Like, get him on the power play. Like, he doesn't, he's not setting the power play lineup. Um, um, uh, Pierre Edward Belmar, RJ. So he's been out for a, a while now, but I think the big thing that he's brought in the limited time that I've been around, you can just see it and you just get the feeling just looking over to that half of the locker room is just the, the positivity, right? Dude just oozes positivity and he just oozes that, like that it factor of like, when you're around people like him, things are going to be okay. Right. Like he's just one of those people. He's always smiling. He's always telling jokes. He's always having a good time and he just puts you at ease. And I feel like that is something that this Kraken team needed. And I feel like that's what he's really brought. That's been most impressive. Yeah, I mean, when the Kraken signed him, everyone would say, oh, he's good in the room. You know, he's a veteran player. You don't realize you know, just how yeah. much that is good true in the room you're around the team. Good in the room is, is an, is understatement. an understatement with him. Yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, he's brought everything that they, they brought him in to do, whether it's being good in the room. Also, I'll, I'll mention being a mentor on face-offs yep. to some of these guys on the team. I know you might say that's a bad thing. You don't want to be good at face-offs. <laughs> I know your philosophy, Dylan. But uh, I, I still think it's a positive thing long-term, helping the guys kind of get savvy in the face-off dot. He's really helped the centers out with that. Yeah, he has. Um, I mean, things, things I'd like to see from him the rest of the way, I, I want to see him do what he was brought in to do RJ, which is win faceoffs in the playoffs, right? Be that guy that, that the team can depend on um, come, come big moments late, late in games in big, important games. And I feel like down the stretch, look, the team's going to be in this wild card chase. There's going to be times, whether it's because of other injuries or whatever it is, where I feel like he's going to be healthy. He'll be back in the lineup and I want to see those moments from him. And the only reason we haven't seen them from him is just because they haven't had those moments yet right it's all early season stuff but i feel like down the stretch there's going to be times where they're going to need him in the lineup and and he's going to get a chance to do what they brought him in to do yeah i mean any improvement i could ask for really i i think would just be stuff that you know is not really the player he was brought in to be like, yeah, yeah, you could score more, but he was never going to score yeah. more for you. This is the player he is. I, I guess just get luckier with where you happen to block your shots. I mean, he yeah. would throw his body in front of any, just, you know, be luckier. Don't break your leg when you uh, block a shot. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you figure that one out, Maybe focus on a career in science and not in hockey. Uh, <laughs> Andre Burakovsky, RJ. Maybe you can help this next guy out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Andre Burakovsky. Let's get the. Let's actually get the the what we'd like to see improve or the rest of the season out of the way first because it's just be healthy, right? I mean, they, that's yeah. all there is. Yeah, we can't pick two things with this. It's it's one thing. Just just be healthy. However, that has to happen. Just find a way to stay in the lineup. I feel so bad for him. This guy cannot catch a break. I mean, even after, you know, the last home game, right? He yep. got a question about, did you have kind of an uh-oh moment as you slid on the boards after your goal? And he said, well, yeah, I mean, it feels like every time I get touched, I get injured nowadays. And, um, you know, that's really tough when a player's in that mindset too, when you realize, yeah, that the, your chances of getting hurt just seem to be so high and your luck is so bad. So I guess, you know, just stay healthy. Somebody out there's got to go to that injury slider, you know, uh, from the any Turn video down. games to so just uh, just <laughs> crank that thing up. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things. Like you gotta gotta work on that. Um, as for what Andre Burakovsky's done so well this year, RJ. I mean, the thing that I love is what we were seeing from him recently here, which was how how good a distributor he is on the power play. He sees the game kind of from the half boards there, you know, halfway down into the zone up against the boards. He sees the game so well from there, like better than so like just about anybody 
anybody else in this league, really, because that's an awkward place to be viewing the game from. And I feel like he just always knows exactly where everybody is, where he can get them the puck. He's one of the few guys on this team, if not the only guy willing to cycle the puck down low to guys net front from that position. Like he is just so much more dynamic on the power play and from an awkward position too than anybody else on this team. I mean, that is what it has impressed me in the limited action we've gotten to see from him the first half of the year. Yeah, this is going to sound maybe kind of self-defeating here, but one thing I was really impressed with, and I guess I still am because I watched the last three shifts of his game before leaving with the injury. I can't tell where it happened. There, there was no real contact that he took. I don't know what even happened with that. But I was impressed at how he was kind of able to maybe change his game up a little bit to not take a whole lot of contact coming back from injuries, and, but not in a way that was cheating the game at all. You know, it's not like, oh, I won't go into the corners. I won't go into the dirty areas. But using his skill to kind of operate in, in areas of the ice where, you know, he's not going to get lined up for a big hit and still being an impactful player. Like, I think that was a, a good adjustment to make coming back from injury. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it, it didn't work. I mean, I think it was effective in reducing contact. We don't know what happened, but um, I don't know. You, you can tell he's thinking through it. I think he's made good adjustments, but I just can't catch a break. No, he can't. And then last but certainly not least, RJ, Devin Shore. Would you like to start us off with Devin Shore? <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> sure. I mean, I, I one thing I've been impressed with with Devin Shore is just the speed and the skill to his game because – I, I know he's a fourth liner. I know he's kind of been an AHL, NHL tweener guy for most mm -hmm. of his career. But especially those few games where he was on a fourth line with Shane Wright and Ryan Winterton. Yeah. And you really cranked up the skill on that fourth line and they wanted to play a skill game. Shore was able to hang with those guys. Mm -hmm. He can play any way you want to play. He can be in a grinded out fourth line style of game or he can turn up the skill and i mean he scored a really sweet breakaway goal in one of those games with right in winterton too I, I guess just you know the versatility there and and the sneaky skill yeah, I, I've been really impressed with how skilled he's been, the speed at which he can play his game and, and be a guy. And then, yeah, the thing that I was really going to bring up was just how great he was playing with Shane Wright and Ryan Winterton. I mean, he put those guys in great spots to succeed in, you know, Winterton's case, first chance at, at NHL level hockey, right? And he put him, he was just helping set him up, making them comfortable. That That's such a an amazing thing for somebody to do in that spot, right? Like, it's it's a tough thing to do. But it was a very it showed how selfless he is as a player. He's really been impressive on the fourth line when he's had opportunities in the lineup. I mean, down the stretch, you know, that's one of the things is like I kind of want him in the lineup more. Like I like him when he's in the lineup, RJ. Is that crazy for, for what I would like to see the rest of the way? No, it's not crazy. I mean, I think he's been an effective fourth liner and, and doing that job and, and in a way that's a bit more dynamic than some of the other guys who kind of rotated in, whether that's Cole Lind or, or Max McCormick, Podorowski. I mean, he's really kind of been head and shoulders above those guys. Yeah, he, he definitely has been. The other thing to improve on, bud, I'm I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm calling you out here, but I'm going to do it. And this is, don't, just don't take it personally because I say this about so many people, okay? I say this about so many people. I said it all through college about people. Work some color into your wardrobe. And I, this is unfair <laughs> to him because I only saw him once outside of uniform, but it was just all black winter gear as he was getting ready to head out for the Christmas break, leaving Anaheim. I was in the elevator with him riding up. He was trying to get out of there quick, but luggage black, coat black, shirt black, pants black. Everything was, the beanie was black. Everything was black. I hate this, RJ. Why does, all young men in our society today are just so, un, they're so afraid of color. I Work color in there. Come on. Work color into the outfit that I saw you wearing one time. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that's 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 good advice. I mean, he was, let's see, because there were a couple times I remembered him on the walk-in when they showed the pictures up on the Jumbotron, and I think he was just wearing brown. So, you know, maybe there's there's a little bit more that you can work like in I there. Like I said, and it's not a him thing. Like, this is a, a thing for, for people of our age, right? He's the same age as me. Like, this is a thing. And I'm just saying, you know, bright colors, they're fun. Yep. Well, hey, you know what? I'm glad I happen to be wearing this bright red shirt <laughs> on this one day. The one day I wear any color on the podcast. Haha, <laughs> that's where you're wrong, RJ, because I can I have the power as the editor of this podcast to just color grade that down to the most beige looking <laughs> thing possible. So are all right, you well, that's RJ? good. I'll, I'll, all the viewers will uh, will then get to see if you put in the effort or not. Yeah, I won't. Go ahead and uh, do that in post. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I won't. Uh that's a safe bet. All right, everybody. That's gonna do it here for our report, our mid season 
season report cards for the entire roster. Hope it lived up to the hype and expectations for everybody. I had a lot of fun doing it. I think we did some good stuff here, RJ. Um, one more shout out to Queen Anne Beer Hall, the place that the org hangs out at a lot of the time. Yeah, we, we can More hand out one night. grade. We'll give an we'll give an A plus to the beer hall. Definitely. Always they get an A plus. It's fantastic. Good stuff over at Queen Anne Beer Hall. So uh well I'll keep workshopping the, the slogan that we can throw out there for him. A little beyond just, you know, eat a pretzel. <laughs> Queen Anne Beer Hall, eat a pretzel. How's that? Eat a pretzel, see a player. Yeah, good stuff. All right, everybody. Thanks so much and we'll see you all next time. <laughs> Hey everyone, before we go, we just wanted to give a quick shout out to all of our awesome patrons over at patreon.com slash emeraldcityhockey, especially our Terror of the Deep patrons. Absurdly Sane, Alex, Alvi, Andrew, Anonymous, Anthony, Beef, Ben, Brad, Brian, Burnt Krem, Kat, Kaylin, Shazzle Dazzle, Chip, Chris, Christian, Cody, Connor, Coop, Corey, DJ Singletone, Duthin, EV99, Eli, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Empty Net Hockey, Eric, Ethan, Evan, Fusion Mix, Gaby, Gary, Gregory, Harry Legionary, Helena, Habak, Jay, Jane, Jessica, Joni, Joseph, Josh, Joshua, Julia, Justin, Katie, Kepler, Kitty B. Kraken, L. Bell, Leanne, Levin, Light, Lonnie, Maeve, Mark, Max, Maya, Michelle, Nick, Night Drop, Noah, Nunya, Paige, Paul, Rachel, Rayanne, Randall, Rebecca, Ryan, Sarah, Scott, Sia Kraken, Sean, Sean, Sergey, Sergeant Pickles, Shannon, Shoeshine, Skeletal Tendency, Steve, Steven, Striatic, Tasty Kobold, Team 114 Chris, Ty, Wendy, Where the Slovakians At, Zame, and Zoe. Thank you so much for making all this possible. We really appreciate your support.